Stop. Don't miss this. This is serious. What I'm about to reveal is no joke. Brace yourselves, because there is someone out there who's been secretly putting you to the test, and the reasons behind it are as serious as they come. This isn't your run-of-the-mill challenge. It's a covert examination with a purpose that's bound to leave you questioning everything. The tension is real, and the stakes are high. Buckle up, because this revelation is about to unfold, and it's nothing short of intense. Before moving forward, affirm your belief in God by commenting yes. Keep in mind our existence is influenced by what we receive, but the true meaning of life lies in what we give. A humble $40 contribution can offer sustenance for a child for several days. Are you ready? A wife's loyalty is tested when her husband has nothing. A husband's loyalty is tested when he has everything, says the father. In the moment we're born, we're drawn to form a union with others, an abiding drive to connect, to love, to belong. In a perfect union, we find the strength we cannot find in ourselves. But the strength of the union cannot be known until it is tested. Every man at some point in his life needs to be tested so he can find out if he's a righteous man or an indifferent one. Before you're given what you want, you'll first be tested with what you don't really want. Your courage will be tested during the adversity as well as during the change, says the father. Faith and relationship are easy when things go well and are difficult to maintain when things go unwell. Lest we forget that its foundation and strength will be tested in times of adversity, not in serenity. Every day you are being tested that's just life. No one can run away from being tested, so don't even bother trying. People drift in and out of your life. Situations shift, and even the scenery around you is ever-changing. This impermanence can be unsettling, but remember, it doesn't diminish my presence. My love for you is the unwavering foundation beneath all this change, an ever-present canopy sheltering you. Even when it feels like everything around you is shifting, remember that I am constant. My presence is like a steady lighthouse guiding you through the stormy seas of life. In a world where everything seems uncertain, find solace in the fact that I am the one true constant in your life. In the midst of chaos and turmoil, cling to the unwavering truth that I am always with you. My love for you knows no bounds and will never falter, no matter what challenges you may face. So. When everything around you seems to be in flux, anchor yourself in the constant love and grace that I offer. It's easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of change and uncertainty, but remember that I am the unchanging rock on which you can always rely. Let this truth bring you peace and comfort as you navigate the ever-changing landscape of life. So, as you go about your day, remember to focus on the constant presence of my love. Let it guide you, sustain you, and give you strength in the face of uncertainty. Trust in the unwavering nature of my love, and you will always find peace in the midst of life's storms. As you navigate interactions, big or small, recognize that I am there too. A simple acknowledgement, a flicker of recognition in your eyes that I am present, brings immense joy. Don't cling to impermanent things even those you thought would last. Change is not a punishment, but a necessary part of your growth. Through it, you learn, heal, and gain wisdom. This wisdom will shift your perspective, reminding you to rely on me. For my love is the one constant you can always hold on to. Allow the transient nature of the world to guide you towards a greater reliance on my enduring love. Now, let me share a tale about someone secretly testing you. Did you notice? A wife's faithfulness is tried when her husband lacks everything. A husband's fidelity is tested when he possesses all. Once upon a time, in the land of Canaan, there lived a man named Job. He was a righteous and prosperous man, blessed with abundant wealth, a loving family, and good health. Job's faith in God was unwavering and he lived his life according to God's commandments, always giving thanks for his blessings. One day, Satan came before the Lord, 
boasting about how no one on earth was as faithful as Job. Satan challenged God, saying that if Job were to face hardship and suffering, he would surely curse God to his face. God, knowing Job's heart, accepted Satan's challenge but put limitations on what he could do to Job. So Satan set out to test Job's loyalty. He caused Job to lose his wealth, his livestock, and even his children in a series of tragic events. Despite the immense suffering and loss, Job remained steadfast in his faith, declaring, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Seeing that Job had not cursed God, Satan went before the Lord again, insisting that if Job were to face physical affliction, he would surely abandon his faith. God permitted Satan to afflict Job with painful sores from head to toe. Job's suffering was unimaginable, yet he did not waver in his faith. Even his wife urged him to curse God and die. But Job remained resolute, saying, Shall we receive good from God, and shall we not receive evil? Through his trials, Job maintained his integrity, refusing to sin with his lips. In the end, God restored Job's fortunes twofold, blessing him with even greater wealth and a new family. Job's story teaches us the importance of remaining faithful to God, even in the face of adversity. It reminds us that true loyalty to God is tested not only in times of prosperity, but also in times of suffering and loss. Like Job, we are called to trust in God's sovereignty and remain steadfast in our faith, knowing that He is always with us, guiding us through every trial and tribulation. Why God tests us or allows us to be tested, we are admitting that testing does indeed come from Him. When God tests His children, he does a valuable thing. David sought God's testing, asking him to examine his heart and mind and see that they were true to him. Psalm 26 verse 2, 139 colon 23. When Abram was tested by God in the matter of sacrificing Isaac, Abram obeyed. Hebrews 11 verses 17 to 19. And showed to all the world that he is the father of faith. Romans 4 verse 16. In both the Old and New Testaments, the words translated test mean to prove by trial. Therefore, when God tests his children, his purpose is to prove that our faith is real. Not that God needs to prove it to himself since he knows all things, but he is proving to us that our faith is real, that we are truly his children, and that no trial will overcome our faith. In his parable of the sower, Jesus identifies the ones who fall away as those who receive the seed of God's word with joy. But, as soon as a time of testing comes along, they fall away. James says that the testing of our faith develops perseverance, which leads to maturity in our walk with God. James 1 verses 3 to 4. James goes on to say that testing is a blessing, because when the testing is over and we have stood the test, we will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. James 1 verse 12. Testing comes from our Heavenly Father who works all things together for good for those who love Him and who are called to be the children of God. Romans 8 verse 28 The testing or trials we undergo come in various ways. Becoming a Christian will often require us to move out of our comfort zones and into the unknown. Perseverance in testing results in spiritual maturity and completeness. This is why James wrote, Consider it pure joy. My brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, James 1 verse 2, the testing of faith can come in small ways and daily irritations. They may also be severe afflictions, Isaiah 48 verse 10, and attacks from Satan, Job 2 verse 7. Whatever the source of the testing, it is to our benefit to undergo the trials that God allows. The account of Job is a perfect example of God's allowing one of his saints to be tested by the devil. Job bore all his trials patiently and did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Job 1 verse 22. However, the account of Job's testing is proof that Satan's ability to try us is limited by God's sovereign control. No demon can test or afflict us with beyond what God has ordained. 
All our trials work toward God's perfect purpose and our benefit. There are many examples of the positive results of being tested. The psalmist likens our testing to being refined like silver. Psalm 66 verse 10. Peter speaks of our faith as of greater worth than gold. And that's why we suffer grief in all kinds of trials. 1 Peter 1 verses 6 to 7. In testing our faith, God causes us to grow into strong disciples who truly live by faith and not by what we see. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 When we experience the storms of life, we should be like the tree that digs its roots ever more deeply for a greater grip in the earth. We must dig our roots more deeply into God's word and cling to his promises so we can weather whatever storms come against us. Most comforting of all, we know that God will never allow us to be tested beyond what we are able to handle by his power. His grace is sufficient for us, and His power is made perfect in our weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 That is why Paul said, For Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Your yearning for encouragement and comfort resonates deeply within me. It is a reflection of the inherent connection we share, a connection built on love and purpose. Look not outward for solace, for true balm resides within the embrace of your spiritual reality. I offer you a call to action, an opportunity to experience intimacy and fullness in a new way. Bring forth your alabaster jar, not filled with fragrant oil, but with the genuine offering of your heart. Pour it out, not upon an idealized figure, but upon the tangible embodiment of my love, the suffering world around you. Do not be hesitant. Is it not within your power to offer solace to weary feet, to bind wounds, to bring light into darkened corners? See me not just in the lofty realms, but in the faces etched with despair, the hands reaching out for support. Every act of compassion, every tear shed in empathy, washes not just their pain, but cleanses my very essence. Remember, you are not alone in this endeavor. As you reach out, I reach back. Your service becomes a bridge, drawing you closer to the wellspring of my love. It is not about grand gestures, but about the consistent, deliberate pouring out of your being. Let your tears flow freely. Let your actions speak louder than words. Do not doubt the impact of your offering. Just as water cleanses and refreshes, your acts of love revitalize my spirit. They become the oil that fuels my presence, the light that banishes darkness. In serving others, you serve me, and in doing so, you unlock a new level of intimacy, a deeper experience of my presence. This is not merely a one-time event. See this as an ongoing invitation, a continuous pouring out that transforms both you and the world around you. As you embrace this path, I promise to catch you, not in some distant future, but here and now. You will find yourself transported to a space of overflowing grace, a communion that transcends earthly limitations. Remember, child, true comfort and encouragement lie not in seeking, but in giving. Embrace this opportunity Step out into the world and experience the transformative power of serving me in the least of these. And know this, as you wash my feet, I wash yours, cleansing you with the boundless love that flows eternally from my heart. Go forth, then, and be the embodiment of my love in a world desperately in need. Today, you may have questioned your path, but I have already aligned your heart with the direction you must take. Even if those around you do not comprehend or endorse it, you've sought solace and reassurance, and I offer both. But more than that, I offer action. My presence isn't passive. The sacrifice made was not for distant observation. Understand that I am intricately involved in your circumstances. The cross was not merely symbolic. It was a decisive act. Likewise, I am actively engaged in what you're facing today. It may seem chaotic, and the way forward may not be clear, 
but I am working at the core of it all to bring resolution. However, this doesn't imply that a magical solution will miraculously appear. It's about collaboration. My hand is extended, but you must meet it. Here's what I request. Be attentive. Notice the subtle changes, the unexpected opportunities, the doors that seem to open by themselves. Recognize them as my influence, my intervention. Don't brush them off as mere chance. Acknowledge them. Rejoice in them. Speak of my involvement in these occurrences. Let your voice declare that I am present and active. This isn't about pride. It's about acknowledging the divine presence. Furthermore, cooperate. Offer me your cooperation and I will bring about change. Remember this. Don't hesitate or resist when these opportunities arise. Step forward with confidence. This is your part in our partnership. Trust that I am guiding you and move forward in that trust. Let nothing deter you from the path I'm carving for you. It leads to your destiny, the purpose I ordained before time began. Walk it boldly, knowing I am by your side every step of the way. Faith is at its strongest when tested, but weakest when doubted. It's during the most challenging trials that breakthroughs occur. Welcome to your sacred sanctuary, a place called there, where, like Elijah fed by ravens, my angels will uphold and nourish you until your destiny unfolds completely. This hidden sanctuary, my beloved, isn't a temporary refuge sought in times of turmoil. It's not a secret chamber visited sporadically, a mental retreat from life's pressures. No, it's your permanent dwelling, the very essence of your existence, the foundation of your being, the adversary, that deceiver and distractor seeks to draw you away into a world of empty pursuits, tempting you with fleeting pleasures and shallow distractions. He wants you to chase illusions, leaving you parched and weary in the dust of your endeavors. Instead of succumbing to the enemy's attempts to reopen old wounds, turn your focus inward and discover the solace of my embrace, my love, and my empowering presence guiding you onward deeper into the truths of my kingdom. In this hidden sanctuary, the once overwhelming pressures dissipate like morning mist before the sun's rays. The towering problems diminish in significance, overshadowed by the magnitude of my presence. Here, there is no authority but mine, no power that dares challenge my sovereignty. I am the originator and perfecter, the architect of destinies, and within this sacred space, I have inscribed my promises onto the very fabric of your existence. These pledges, not written in ink but in the fire of my love, are enduring, unyielding, and steadfast. Leave behind the superficial allure of worldly pleasures, the temporary satisfaction they promise but never fulfill. Dive deep into the depths where your soul resonates with the thunderous echoes of my love. Here. Within the hidden sanctuary, I will revive your spirit like a spring of living water, satisfying the thirst of your weary soul. I will renew your mind, dispelling doubts and fears, granting you a clarity that reflects my own. I will fortify you with enduring strength, not fragile and easily broken, but firm like a mountain grounded in unwavering faith. And when adversity strikes, as it inevitably will, I will equip you with resilience forged in the furnace of my love, a shield and sword to deflect the enemy's attacks. Reject the distractions that lure you away, the illusions that cloud your vision. Tune out the noise of the world, silence the clamor of your own worries, and step into the sanctuary of my presence. Here, in the tranquil embrace of the secret place, find solace in my love security in the everlasting arms that will support you through every trial. This is your birthright, my beloved child, your inheritance as a cherished daughter or son. Embrace it fully and let it guide you steadfastly on your journey through life. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This is the word of the Lord from James 5 verse 16. 
So stop doubting. Prayer changes everything. Keep praying until something happens. Now, these words are very comforting, and yet it's easy to forget the sheer weight and power of these words, especially when the storms of life threaten to capsize our little boats. So you may be asking, what does it mean when we say that prayer changes everything? What does it mean when we say, stop doubting and keep praying until something happens? Today, I will talk about this powerful spiritual weapon that can make a big difference in your life. You know, talking to God is like talking to your best friend. It's that comforting voice in your ear, always there to listen, always there to guide you. What we have to remember is that prayer is a two-way street. It's not just about asking for what we want, it's also about listening, opening our hearts, and letting God speak to us. When we truly listen, we start to hear the wonderful things God wants for us. We start to hear the instruction that God gives us concerning our situations. And that's the miracle of prayer. And that's how prayer changes everything. Can you remember the time when Peter, one of Jesus' best friends, was locked up in jail? His friends were really worried and didn't know what to do. So they turned to prayer. They asked God for help. And guess what happened? An angel appeared in Peter's cell and walked him right out of there. This wasn't because his friends had a magic wand. They had something more powerful. They had prayer. And their prayer didn't just change their feelings. It brought about a real big change in the world around them. But that's not all. Even when things don't go exactly as we asked, prayer still has a big impact. It changes us from the inside. It connects us with God. It gives us peace, patience, and strength to face anything. So prayer doesn't always change the situation in the way we sometimes expect, but it always changes us, making us more like Jesus. I in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, in chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. This just means that when we talk to God about what we want or need, He hears us. He's ready to help us when we ask Him. The Bible tells us that prayer is powerful. It can do so much good. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, we are told that if we ask anything according to God's will, He listens. Isn't that great news? So when we pray, we're not just talking into thin air. We're having a chat with God, and He's ready and willing to help us. He wants to listen to us and talk with us. That's the amazing power of prayer. Now, when we say prayer changes everything, it's a big statement, isn't it? But it's true. And to understand it better, let's look at some examples. Jabez was a man in the Bible who knew all about how prayer could change everything. You can find his story in the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Now, his mother had named him Jabez because his birth had brought her great pain. But Jabez didn't want to live a life of pain and sorrow. So you know what he did? He prayed to God. He asked God to bless him, to help him, and to keep him from harm so that he would not suffer. And guess what? God answered Jabez's prayer. God gave him what he asked for. This shows how prayer can bring big changes into our lives. Prayer is truly powerful. Now let's look at a story from our own time. There was a man named Nicky Cruz. He used to be a gang leader, and his life was full of violence and crime. But one day, he met a man named David Wilkerson, a preacher who prayed for him. Nicky laughed at him at first, but David didn't give up. He believed in what it says in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So David kept praying for Nicky. And you know what? Nicky's life completely changed. He left the gang and started helping other people instead. Today, he is the founder of Nicky Cruz Outreach, an evangelistic Christian ministry, and he is also the author of several Christian books. His story shows us that prayer really can change everything, but there's something we need to remember. Sometimes when we pray, it seems like God isn't answering straight away. Does that mean he's not listening? No way. God is always listening. But sometimes he wants us to keep praying, to keep asking. This is what Jesus taught us in the story of a man who went to his friend's house late at night. In the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 to 10, the scripture says, Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. 
The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Now, you know, sometimes we all have doubts. It's a part of being human. Even the man in the Bible whose son was not well had doubts. His story is in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 24. He said to Jesus, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. He was honest about his doubt, but he asked Jesus to help him with it. And that's okay. We can ask God to help us when we have doubts, but how can we fight these doubts? How can we make our faith stronger? One big way is through prayer. When we talk to God and listen to Him, it can make our faith stronger. It's just like when we spend time with a good friend. The more time we spend with them, the better we get to know them, and the more we trust them. It's the same with God. The Bible tells us this in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When we hear God's word, when we pray and listen to him, it helps us believe more. And when we believe more, it helps us to have less doubt. But what if we need wisdom to deal with our doubts? The Bible has an answer for that too. In the book of James, chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. So not only can prayer make our faith stronger, but it can also give us wisdom to fight our doubts. Remember, doubt is normal, but don't let it win. Keep praying, keep trusting God, and let His Word make your faith stronger. But it's important to remember that God's wisdom surpasses ours. He sees the bigger picture that we can't see. His ways and thoughts are higher than ours, as the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, verses 8-9. to when it seems like God isn't answering our prayers, it could be for several reasons. One such reason is that we might be asking amiss or with wrong intentions. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible talks about asking with wrong motives to fulfill our own selfish desires. When we pray with the intent of self-gratification or for things that do not align with God's will or His plans for us, we may find that these prayers go unanswered. Or maybe the timing isn't right yet. Or perhaps what we are asking for isn't ultimately the best for us. Or it might be that God is using the situation to grow our faith and character. God is our loving Father, and He wants the very best for us. Sometimes, this means He doesn't give us what we want when we want it. But we can always trust in His love and wisdom, knowing that He is working all things together for our good. But the Bible tells us something important about this. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, Verse 11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. This means that God has a perfect time for everything. It may not be our time, but it's always the best time. This is also told in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. This tells us that even if what we're praying for seems slow in coming, we need to be patient and wait for it. And one more thing. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's not slow. He's patient, and He wants what's best for us. Now here's another interesting story from the Bible about not giving up in prayer. It's about a man named Jacob. The story is in the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 to 32. Verses 22. One night, Jacob found himself wrestling with a man until dawn. He didn't give up, even when the man put his hip out of joint. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And you know what? The man gave Jacob a new name, Israel, and he blessed him there. Jacob didn't give up. He kept wrestling until he got his blessing. That's a lot like prayer. Sometimes we have to keep praying, keep wrestling with our worries and doubts until we get our blessing. We have to be patient and persistent. 
And when we do that, just like Jacob, we'll see that prayer can bring blessings and growth in our lives. So keep praying until it happens. Today, we've learned that prayer is like talking and listening to God. It's a way we can ask for help, thank Him for His blessings, and even tell Him about our doubts and fears. And we've seen how powerful it can be for Jabez in the Bible to Nikki Cruz in our own time. We've seen how prayer can really change things, and I'm sure some of us have our own testimonies as well. Thought we've also learned that it's okay to have doubts. Doubting is just a part of being human, but we can't let doubt win. We can pray about our doubts and ask God to help us with them. And we can trust in His Word, which tells us that faith comes from hearing His Word. But perhaps one of the biggest things we've learned is that we need to be patient and keep praying. Like Jacob in the Bible, we need to be persistent. And we need to remember that God's timing is the best timing. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, to pray without ceasing. That means we should always be praying, always be talking and listening to God. And in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace, that sense of calm and well-being that comes from knowing that God is with us, that's what prayer can bring. So I encourage all of us to commit to praying without ceasing. Make prayer a part of your daily routine. Let's be like Jacob, like Jabez, like David Wilkerson who kept praying for Nikki Cruz. Let's keep praying, no matter what, because prayer can change everything. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our faithful and loving God. Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are my creator and my counselor, guiding me daily to make wise decisions. Gracious God, you are my comforter in sorrow, pain, and distress. I come before you today with a humble and open heart. I thank you for your grace, I thank you for your love, and for the gift of life. Lord, I am grateful that you're always there for me in the good times and the bad. Lord, I pray for a shift in my life and circumstances. I ask that you will unlock doors of opportunities for me, bring healing to my body, and bring about change in my life. Forgive me, Lord, for the times that I let doubts creep in. Lord, I rebuke every temptation to doubt in the name of Jesus. I pray for faith that moves mountains, for the strength to stop doubting, and to keep praying until it happens in the name of Jesus. I declare victory over fear and doubt. I declare that I will not be moved by what I see or hear, but by the Word of God, which is the truth eternal and unchanging. Lord, I ask for you to guide my thoughts so that they may align with your will. May you touch my heart that it may be full of love, courage, and forgiveness. Lord, May you touch my spirit that I may be filled with your peace. Father, I recognize that I need your guidance every step of the way. Help me to be patient, to wait on your perfect timing. I thank you, Lord, that you will work all things together for my good. I rebuke the spirit of impatience or frustration in the name of Jesus. I declare that I will pray without ceasing. Lord, help me to keep trusting and keep believing. Help me to continue praying until my change comes. For I know that you are a faithful God who never fails. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life and over the lives of my loved ones, that it may be a testament to your glory. May my words and actions reflect your love and grace. I rebuke any form of negativity or unkindness in my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for the power of prayer, for the privilege of coming to you, for the assurance that you hear me. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your never-ending love and grace. Lord, I pray for a breakthrough, for a turnaround, and for an overflow of your blessings in my life. I know it's not by my power nor by my might, but by your Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for reminding me that I should keep praying until it happens. Lord, I want my prayers to reflect your righteousness. Teach me to pray for things that align with your plans and your purposes. Guide my words and thoughts so that I don't ask out of selfish desires but in a way that seeks to honor you and further your kingdom. Lord, just as I pray for change in my own life, I pray for change in the lives of my loved ones. As I place them before you, Lord, may they come to know and experience your love and grace in a profound and personal way. Where there is pain or sickness, may you bring healing. 
Where there is confusion, may you bring clarity. Where there is unrest and instability, may you bring peace. And where there is doubt, may you instill faith. Lord, I rebuke any negative influence and every power of darkness over our lives and our relationships in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance that as I make my request known to you, you are listening. I thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Have you ever felt the tranquility of early morning when the world is hushed and the day brims with potential? This moment, so serene and pregnant with promise, resembles commencing our day with prayer. Just as the dawn's light begins to blanket the sky, dispelling darkness, initiating our day with God illuminates our path, guiding us through whatever lies ahead. Prioritizing prayer as the first action of our day isn't just about the words we utter. It's about forging a connection with our Creator. It's about offering our time, thoughts, and hearts to Him before anything else. Today, we delve into the significance of making prayer the inaugural act of our day, exploring how this simple yet profound practice can influence the course of our day, impact our mood, and shape our interactions with others. When we start our day with prayer, we declare to God, you are the most important part of my day. This act of prioritizing God sets the tone for everything that follows, affirming our faith and trust in Him. It's a practice that not only strengthens our faith, but also enriches our daily lives, infusing them with peace, joy, and purpose. Commencing each morning with conversation with God is more than just a ritual. It's a lifeline, anchoring our souls in the certainty of His love and promises. It establishes a precedent for the rest of the day, offering a perspective aligned with God's will and brimming with hope. Morning prayer isn't merely a routine. It's an act of faith, believing that God hears us, cares for us, and is actively involved in our lives. It's an expression of our dependence on Him, acknowledging that we need His wisdom and strength to navigate the day. Moreover, starting our day with God empowers us to embody the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These qualities become more evident in our lives when we spend time with God each morning, enriching our relationships and allowing us to become vessels of His love. Morning prayer equips us with wisdom for the day's decisions, guiding us in both major choices and everyday matters. It sets a rhythm of communion with God that can continue throughout the day, transforming ordinary moments into opportunities to experience His presence and work in our lives. The practice of starting our day with God through prayer is a journey of faith, trust, and surrender. It promises not just a good day, but a God-centered life, rich in peace, purpose, and joy. Let's commit to making prayer the first action of our day, inviting God's presence into every moment and allowing His will to shape our lives. Morning prayer reminds us that true peace is found in the presence of God. Let us, therefore, cherish these early moments with God, allowing His peace to fill us and flow through us. May it be a guiding light throughout our day, a reminder of God's constant presence and unwavering love. In doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also extend this peace to those around us, creating ripples of God's love in a world in desperate need of His peace. Embarking on each new day with morning prayer not only immerses us in peace, but also fortifies us with a strength that is not our own. This strength, bestowed upon us by the Almighty, is a testament to the power that lies in beginning our day rooted in divine communion. It is a strength that surpasses physical capabilities, nurturing our inner resilience and empowering us to face life's challenges with courage and determination. This divine strength is a promise from God to those who seek Him, as vividly captured in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Morning prayer is our act of waiting on the Lord, of dedicating the first fruits of our day to Him. And in return, He renews our strength, equipping us to soar above the trials and tribulations of life. The strength we gain from starting our day in God's presence goes beyond mere endurance. It transforms our perspective on adversity. Challenges become opportunities to witness God's power at work in our lives. Trials become platforms for His grace to be displayed, and weaknesses become conduits for His strength to be perfected. This strength enables us to persevere with joy, knowing that our victory is secured in Christ. 
Furthermore, the strength derived from morning prayer infuses our faith with vitality. It anchors us in the truth of God's word and promises, fortifying our trust in Him. In moments of doubt or fear, the remembrance of our morning encounters with God serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us of His faithfulness and the unshakable foundation upon which our lives are built. Also, the strength we receive from morning prayer prepares us for spiritual warfare. Armed with the full armor of God, we can stand against the schemes of the enemy, secure in the knowledge that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our morning prayers act as a declaration of our dependence on God, activating His power and protection over our lives. In essence, the strength gained from our daily communion with God is multifaceted, touching every area of our lives. It is a strength that does not boast in its own might, but in the power of the one who promises to be our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. As we continue to prioritize morning prayer, let us do so with the expectation of being filled anew with God's indomitable strength, ready to face whatever the day may hold with confidence and grace. In the scriptures, we find compelling stories of individuals whose lives were profoundly shaped by their commitment to putting prayer first. These biblical characters offer us timeless examples of how starting the day with God can lead to divine guidance, protection, and empowerment in fulfilling God's purposes. Their stories encourage us to make prayer the first action of our day, trusting that like them, we will experience God's guidance, protection, and empowerment to fulfill our divine calling. As we follow in their footsteps, let us remember that our prayers, whether in times of joy, uncertainty, or distress, are always heard by a God who is intimately involved in the details of our lives. Let us first seek God in prayer, laying the foundation of our journey in His presence. This divine attentiveness assures us of His unwavering support and guidance. It beckons us to approach Him with confidence, knowing that each prayer plants the seeds for miracles yet unseen. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you in awe of your majesty and grace. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your power is infinite, your wisdom beyond understanding, and your love for us everlasting. You are worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for your mercies that are new every morning. We are thankful for this new day, a fresh opportunity to experience your love, to walk in your ways, and to reflect your light to those around us. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your unfailing love that surrounds me and my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful for your daily provisions and blessings. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Merciful Father, I acknowledge my sins before you and ask for your forgiveness. I also choose to forgive those who have trespassed against me, releasing any bitterness or resentment, for you have called us to live in freedom and peace. Lord, I come to you seeking to start each day in your presence, to lay the foundation of my day upon your word and prayer. Help me to seek you first, trusting that all I need will be added unto me, as you have promised. I ask that you would guide my steps, direct my paths, and fill me with your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke and bind every plan of the enemy to disrupt my peace, steal my joy, or derail my purpose. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of confusion, fear, worry, anxiety, and discouragement. Father, I ask for your protection over me and my loved ones. Shield us from the attacks of the enemy and surround us with your angels. I ask for your healing hand upon us, believing for restoration and strength in our bodies. Lord, bless us in our coming and going, and let your blessings and favor rest upon us as we walk through this day. Let us be vessels of your love and grace to others. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, asking for your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, to empower us to live lives that glorify you. Guide us, Lord, in your wisdom. Protect us in your strength. Heal us in your mercy and bless us with your abundance. We claim victory over every challenge, declare healing over every illness, and give thanks for your provision and protection. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, 
in the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. Then, I encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.